So today I am out here and I'm trying to decide if I need to go back inside and get like a coat, like an actual winter coat. <laughs> Cause it's freezing out here. But I think I'm gonna brave it for now and then we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, I think we're good. We can do this. So we're going to the back because today I wanted to give you guys just like an update on my planters that I planted this year. All of my planters this year have been kind of like an afterthought or just I had extra plants laying around and so I plopped them in planters and um, I didn't really put any effort into like properly planting anything up for my front porch or my deck up here. Uh, usually I just deck the deck out <laughs> with some cool annuals and just lots of fun things but we just had so many things going on this spring, uh, summer, tons of projects and I just couldn't be bothered to put take the time and put extra money into planters. So what I did was it just kind of happened organically and I planted a few here and a few there uh, as the summer went on. So we'll start over here and these are probably, these are my two favorite planters that I have in my whole yard this year and um, possibly my favorite item in my yard this year. And that is because everything in these two planters was free or given to me um, or I just dug it up out of my yard and put it in the planter. So here they are. It is freezing right now. It's like September. So they are starting to look a little bit more rough like these impatience. But let me pull it out so you can see it better. I wonder if you can see that better on there. Yeah. So this, I'm pretty sure this is an elegant pasta and it just reseeded itself in my garden. So I dug it up. It was quite a bit more smaller than this when I put it in here. And I plopped it in here and it looks great. Then down here, this is a evening gown, Hucura. It is a proven winter plant. And my sister gave that to me. She got it for free at the Walters Garden Tour. And then over here, we have a Queen of Hearts Brennera and I think we got this at the Walters Garden Tour as well. So this is a really really pretty Brennera. Giant heart-shaped leaves with like a silvery blue uh, foliage there and I love this plant. And then the Impatience, I got those for free from my sister. So I just really love this planter and it has looked like this all season long. Sure enough, it took, you know, some time for these impatients to fill in, maybe a couple weeks, but after they did, it just looked gorgeous. And I love it in this terracotta pot as well. So then next to it, over here, I've got this other planter. And I actually planted this planter up last year. And I had this obsidian hikara in there, and then this southern comfort heucara in there and they came back this year they overwintered in this container and all winter long I had it setting I had that planter setting I don't know I think right about there so it was getting lots of moisture from the snow all year and sure enough those two heucara in there came back I think I had a third plant in there a third perennial and it was a carex grass that did not fully come back there was a little tiny sprout that come had come back and I actually took it out and planted it in my garden because I thought it would do better in my garden and then I ended up coming in here and uh putting in like three impatients to kind of give it a little bit of color but it is blooming right now and it has actually been blooming for quite some time like I don't know probably like three or four weeks the blooms on it are just staying like this super pretty but this is one of my favorite 
containers because it was completely free. Like I said, these came back from last year and it's gorgeous. I love this Southern Comfort Hucara. It just has the most giant, beautiful leaves. They emerge more like an orangey color and then they kind of transform into this golden yellow color. And then this obsidian Hucara, this is probably my favorite, one of my favorite Hucara as well. So we'll put this one back. And obviously the impatience will die back here pretty soon. Uh, I think last year my impatience, they went in through November and these are beacon impatience. They don't get any uh, downy mildew. So they're just a really great disease resistant plant if you love impatience, but you tend to get that downy mildew. Look for the one that says beacon on the tag. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave the perennials. So um, the, the, all the heuchera, the brunner, and the hasa, I'm going to leave them in here and see how they do. And I'll probably actually just leave them right here because they're kind of a little bit covered up, uh, but they will still get the snowfall that will provide them moisture all winter long. And then over here, here's another little planter. So all these hens and chicks here I got from my sister and I planted up this little planter. This is just a hyper tufa planter and it is made out of cement, water, perlite, and peat moss. It does have a little drainage hole in the bottom and these hens and chicks are super cool. So, so how hens and chicks work, they are a perennial in my area, uh, hardy to like zone three or so. Uh, so they're super hardy. The only thing is, is after about like, I don't know, around three years, it just depends. This hen, the bigger plant here, it will die back. So it starts to create these little tiny babies. As you can see, that one right there is starting to put off these little babies called chicks. So this is the hen, this is the hen, and these are the little baby chicks. These chicks will start to produce, you see that? Their own little root system there. You see those roots? And then what happens is, I don't know, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any, I haven't noticed like an exact amount of time, but I would say around like average of three years, this hen will die back and then you can take these chicks and root them in the ground and they will uh, become their own hen. So that's what, if you, if you find that your hens and chicks are dying back, it's just kind of a normal thing. It's just what happens. Um, but for this planter, I am going to actually probably put it up close to my house and leave, leave it in this planter. And most of these should um, come back because not all of them have even started producing any chicks. I see a few little chicks in there, but I mean, it'll be a few years before they actually die back. So we'll see how good this one does. Speaking of hens and chicks, here is another planter I planted up this year. And this is all free stuff from my sister. So she gave me all of these hens and chicks. Some of these look like they might not be as hardy as others. These ones, uh, I find these like reddish ones are a little bit more hardy than like this guy right here it's got the kind of softer velvety leaves on it so we'll see how he does but just like my hyper my hyper tufa pot i just showed you i'm going to keep this up probably right over there next to the house just so it has a little bit of coverage and protection from the winter and we'll see how it does now i went in and i put some of this creeping jenny in from my yard i just pulled it up from my hill in my gully and plopped it in here it's already like rooted in it's crazy this stuff is insane I love it so much like I'm I'm pulling on that and it's already rooted in and I just <laughs> planted this up like gosh I don't even know like what was it like a month ago maybe look at that it's already rooted in so this stuff is super cool if you have it in your yard dig it up throw it in your planters it's free and it looks beautiful look at all the color in this so yeah, I'm really happy with this planter. I actually got this planter for $11, I think, at Lowe's on sale. 
it was like, I don't know, oh, it was 40, it's like 45 bucks, and I got it for $11. It's a clamshell. So I'm not even gonna pretend to count how great of a sale that was. <laughs> but I just think it's super cool. I did have people asking about this, if it had drainage in it. It did not have drainage, but as you can see, it dips down pretty low, and I found every time I watered it, the water naturally drained out of these little dips. So, I mean, it's, it's doing really great. There was a few succulents that had seeded themselves in my sister's hens and chicks when she gave them to me, and so I just planted them in here, and I think it actually looks pretty cool. It gives it a little bit more texture and height. So, yeah, that turned out pretty good. Now we will make our way over here. These planters, I am actually pleasantly surprised on how they turned out because these are all clearance plants slash plants I dug out from my yard and it was hot when I did it. So each planter is exactly the same. They have the same plants in them. My mom bought me these pulmonaria. This is spot on pulmonaria. She bought me these autumn joy sedums and then these uh, Carex ever, shoot, what is this? I think it's Evergold maybe. And they were in their grower pots for like all summer long, probably like two months. It, it's really bad. But I finally got them, you know, planted up. And these geraniums here, these were planted actually over in my uh, vegetable garden. I had got them on clearance one year and I just threw them over in my vegetable garden because I had space over there. And so I finally dug them up and I put them in these uh, containers here and they were on a struggle when I when I dug them up it was so bad I didn't think they were gonna make it to be honest I was rooting for them and I kept them over in the shade over there by my shed for like a good week and they popped back so they're looking really pretty then these impatience I got from my sister for free so I didn't pay any money for for these containers and you know for a free container I think it it's actually really pretty obviously the eyesore in this container are these sedum these just did not do good in their grower pots all year they were over in the shade all season long they didn't get any sun until I put them in here and so I don't even know if they're gonna properly open up but we'll see they're trying so for these, I don't think I'm going to leave these in the containers. I'll probably uh, transplant these into my garden only because I've never kept pulmonaria in a pot before and overwintered it. And this is a really expensive plant. It's a proven winter brand plant. And I don't want to take the chance of it dying. So I'm going to take them out of these containers and put them in my yard somewhere. Same thing with the Carex. I have not had good luck wintering over Carex. It's a little bit fussy uh, in my yard, so I'm gonna take those out as well and overwinter them. The sedum would probably be fine. The geranium would probably be fine, so we'll see if I leave those in or transplant them. So let's go down here. Probably should have done this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago because these were looking a lot better. Now that it is getting really cold out, they're starting to go downhill. But these pots, I was so excited about all season. They looked so beautiful. I got all these plants for free. The hasta and the heuchera I dug out of my yard. They weren't doing good where I had them and they just look really great in here now. Same with the, the um, beacon and patience. My sister gave me those for free. So that one looks really pretty. Uh, this one over here looks beautiful too. And so I dug this house out of my yard, this heuchera here out of my yard, and then this little pumpkin spice heucherella. I think there's actually two of them in here. These looked like complete crap when I put them in here. And they just really look a lot better than what they did. That one is a little bit small, but I feel like the creeping Jenny is kind of, you know, taking over. This Creeping Jenny I pulled out of my yard too, so that was free. But I really loved this planter this year too. It's so cute. I love it. 
And then over here, this is kind of like the first one we just looked at. It has this, I feel like this is a uh, silver, no, what is this? Glitter? Glitz or gl glitz or glitter? Or... I don't know. I can't remember what Hukura that is. But then there's this hosta as well that just reseeded itself. I pulled it off and put it in that planter. So those planters have been doing really great. And one of the reasons I love those planters so much is because they were free. I didn't spend any money on them. And I think I've told you guys before, like there's something about free things that, for, well for me, that just make me feel so much better and relaxed um, because I didn't put a ton of money, in, I didn't put any money into it. So if it doesn't work out, if it dies, you know, it's like, it's, there's no stress on me because I didn't waste money on something. It's like, if it does great, it's just like an added extra bonus because I didn't put any money into it. And uh, I hate spending money. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, so next we are over here in this little area. This is a little experiment I did too. So I have a few planters here. This was just something I did on a whim. I have this little Alberta spruce, I think. Um, in this pot and then I have a little variegated boxwood in the pot like I said these were just done on a whim I kind of cleaned up this area a little bit what I did was I made an area right through there so I could back in my gator and dump a bunch of crap and all these plants were in that space so I had to move them that seducer hosta I I don't like it there at all. It doesn't serve any purpose next to these Francis William Hosta. Like it looks way too similar. So uh, what I did was I just put it in the pot because eventually I'm going to move it somewhere else and I didn't want to have to keep digging it up. And then kind of the same situation with these. I want to find an actual spot for these and I don't want to keep digging them up. However, when I put them here, my husband was like, oh, those look really cool right there. Maybe you could leave them. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I might leave them. But for these pots, I am going to bring them up on my porch for the winter time. I think that if I left them out here, this terracotta here, these are ter uh, real terracotta pots, they'll probably crack. And so uh, just like with my globe, uh, uh, what are they? My globe arborvitaes over there. I always bring those up on my front porch every year so that the terracotta plant doesn't crack and so that the deer don't eat them. Uh, so I'm going to bring these up on my front porch and I'm thinking I might decorate them a little bit for Christmas. Maybe I'll put some twinkle lights on them or I don't know, wrap a red bow on them or whatever. The hasta will probably be fine right there. We'll see. I might leave it there. I might put it up by my shed or something just to give it a little bit of protection. but. That's kind of my thought process around that. All right, so let's go up and I'll show you my, you guys, this rose. I feel like we have to look at it every time we walk by. It's blooming again. It's so beautiful. I love this rose. I don't fertilize it. I don't water it. I don't cut it back, prune it, trim it, nothing. It's just so beautiful. You can find them at Lowe's. I think I got that for like six bucks <laughs> at the end of the season one year. All right, so let's go up here into Raccoon Alley. And we come to these three planters right here. So there's one, two, three. Now, these two little planters, in the springtime, I planted them with just straight beacon and patience. Well, I came out here one day and, uh, excuse all the weeds here. Somebody had come in here and just hacked off all the impatience. I'll try to find a picture of it. And it was just these like little impatient stalks sticking up. It was really sad. Somebody just got really hungry. So what I did was I dug up these wildberry heuchera. They were, I had two of them. And 
they were over let's see here they were over there in my wood pile and you couldn't see them because they were hiding behind that whirlwind hosta over there so what i did is i dug them up and i put them in this planter along with a couple carrots that my mom got me on clearance and then i think i dug up an impatient from my yard <laughs> and put them in here and they've done so good this wild berry hue curl was a little bit smaller than the other one but it's holding on and i will probably leave those in there to overwinter like i said with my other planter i will probably just put them up close to my house and we'll see the carex i might take out i'm not really sure yet what i'm going to do with those either way i'll give them either protection by the house or i'll take them out and put them in the ground so then right here I got all of these annuals for a dollar at a little roadside shop that I go to every year. I love that little shop. And let's see, I think I put a couple perennials in here too. Oh yeah, so I put in a spot on palmineria and then a primo black pearl heucara in there. So what I'll do with these is this uh, spot on palmineria, I have those other two in those pots over there on the deck so like i said i'll take those two spot ons out and i will pair them up with this third spot on and i will find a nice little trio spot in my garden for them and i might just try to let that primo black pearl winter over in this pot because my heucara seem to do fine wintering over in pots and this is enough protection under here we are under tons of like canopy trees galore and i feel like it will be just fine if i leave it in that pot but we will see i think next year what i want to do is so this is a brown whiskey barrel pot and you can see it kind of blends in with the mulch right here and i don't really like that i feel like it needs more of a contrast so what i'll do is next year i'll probably find a nice spot to lay another little pea stone bed and i'll put it in a pea stone bed or in some sort of rock bed that would help it stand out a little bit more. And then as far as the plants, I will probably try to stick with more brighter, greener, uh, light greener leafy plants. So you can see like this surefire begonia, it looks really pretty in here, but the bronze leaf is really not standing out very much. So I'd probably use more of like the green leaf. See how this kind of pops a little bit more in here against this mulch. So you can see that contrast. If you look at that leaf up next to the mulch there in the background, it just pops a little bit more. Whereas this, see that it kind of blends in a little bit more with the mulch there in the background. See that and that. And so that's probably what I'll do is, you know, these obviously these uh, double up begonias, they stand out a little bit better but they'd stand out even more if i had the green leaf instead of the bronze leaf so that's probably what i'll do next year with that and then let's come around here see what else we have oh yeah so that planter right there i think i dug that up from the pathway that i needed to make for my gator and just put it in that terracotta planter and I bumped it up on a piece of wood that my husband probably cut from a dead tree uh, just so that the terracotta isn't sitting directly on the dirt because it will rot the pot and that is just a variegated boxwood and then over here we've got this cute little planter here got these plants for free these are in Beacon and Patients I got from my sister and it is the end of September so they have been hit by the cold a little bit so they're not looking the greatest and this Creeping Jenny Lissamake here I just pulled that out from my yard I think it looks really pretty just hanging hanging down there and these this planter I got for free too uh, this is just a pot that my friend gave me and uh, this is just a pedestal that I got on the side of the road it's just a cast iron pedestal 
and let's see. So speaking of this path that my friend gave me, I just told you, I had a friend that I used to work with and she used to live over in the Benton Harbor, Michigan area and she was moving to the east side of the country and so she had all these terracotta pots and just all kinds of garden things that she didn't want to haul over to the east side of the country so she called me up and she's like hey do you want all these terracotta pots i'm like are you kidding me these are like this is like hundreds of dollars worth of terracotta pots they're like nice too they're like the old the older ones that are like super thick and well made and so I loaded up, I drove to Benton Harbor, I loaded up my car, and uh, so I have all these pots. And not only am I excited to have all these awesome pots for free, but they just mean so much to me because they came from my friend. Every time I see these pots, I think of my friend, and it just brings me so much joy. Uh, so anyway, yeah, if you're watching, thanks Bonnie, I love you, I miss you. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Oh, and speaking of that, she also gave me uh, the two bird baths that I have. So this blue one, I'll show you here. She gave me this blue bird bath. <laughs> she just gave it to me. And I need to clean it up really well. It's pretty gross. Boy, is it hard to keep a bird, bird bath clean. And then she also gave me this bird bath over here. So yeah, she gave me all these pots. Uh, I take that back. I bought that big one. But all the rest of them she gave me this little bird bath and I love this because there's a starfish in the middle and my favorite movie is the little mermaid and so I feel like this is so perfect it's like down in my little garden of treasures <laughs> uh, so anyway I've got these pots that she gave me and I've got these globe arbor vitis in them. I planted these globe arbor, arbor vitis in here probably like three years ago and I got them on clearance at the end of the season from a store called Flowerland Fruit Basket where I live. I got six of them but I planted three in three terracotta pots and then three in the ground. The deer came by and completely ate the three that I planted in the ground. These ones survived. I've got one, two, and then there's like a third one up there. These ones survived because I put them up on my front porch every year and decorate my front porch for winter. So, yeah, the freaking deer. Eventually I will bring these up and put them on my front porch. I think I got them for like six bucks a piece. Now these are, the regular old school globe arbor varieties. Like if I put this in the ground, it will get out of control huge. So I'm I'm not going to put them in the ground. I, I just want them to stay this size. So we'll see how long they can survive in these pots. They've been in, like I said, for about two and a half to three years, probably like two full years. And then my third one, is up over here. Right here. here I usually do some really cool planters <laughs> but like I said I just couldn't be bothered this year with it because we were just so busy uh, so I just brought out my mangave so I got these mangave last year and I overwintered them they are an amazing plant I will talk to you guys about them sometime if you don't have them they are an awesome plant and man I kind of almost would go out on a limb and say I like these just as much or even better than succulents because you can't kill them as easy as you can succulents by overwatering them they can handle a lot more water so those are some mangave like I said I wintered those over this is some tradescancha I got from my sister I just plopped in that container there and it is doing really good 
And I love the color. I think it's gonna transition into fall and like Halloween season really well. This uh, aloe has seen better days. I really have to give it some attention and clean the entire pot out and just transplant it and pick off all of the extra babies and like gift them to people, I guess. This is a money tree that I always bring out on my porch during the summertime because it does really good out here. <gasps> oh my gosh. See that dirt? The chipmunk is probably hiding his nuts in there. This is what they do. <sighs> yeah, anyway, that's a mangave and I'm probably gonna have to clean that up and make sure there's no nuts in there. Bring it inside. Then up here, we have this try to skin chaw hanging basket. My sister gave me the plants and it's looking really pretty. Then down here, these planters, I planted these, I don't know, I think last year, the year before, probably last year, I think. And they've just, it's just a little boxwood with some hens and chicks around it. Nothing fancy. Um, oh, I completely forgot about this one. Here, let's go. You see that one right there? I'm gonna go over on the other side because I see some poison ivy right there and I don't wanna walk in it. So this planter we planted up, this is cinnamon stick hikura and it is looking beautiful. This is a yellow polka dot bikini hasta and it is also looking beautiful and this is a queen of heart brenner up. And just because I really love these plants so much and these are new plants this year, I, did I pay for them? No, I got them for free. No, I got these two for free off my work free wagon. That one I did pay for, but it was 50% off. I got three of them for $2.50 each. Um, so since they are newer this year, I don't think I'm gonna be wintering them over in this container. I just really want to give them a fighting chance and so I'll probably end up putting them in the ground somewhere because I really want them to survive. But that's another planter. And then we'll go up the stairs and we should be done. Again, up here, I usually have really pretty things going on, <laughs> but not this year. So, nothing too special up here. Um, like I said, my friend she gave me that container. She gave me this old strawberry, uh, strawberry jar, and I ended up putting these beautiful hens and chicks in here from my sister. Love all the colors of this. I will leave these in this container and I uh, put it up by my house. I love this container because when I was planting it, my little brother who was in the army, he called me and I got to talk to him. And so every time I look at it, I think of my little brother and uh, how much fun it was to, to talk to him on the phone when he called me while I was planting that. Up here, I have some more just like uh, cactus and string of pearls, succulents. This is a sago palm I think that's how you say it sago or sago palm and I'll bring those in here really soon because it's getting pretty cold out here for those now they came out here to summer camp <laughs> succulent summer camp one of you guys told me about that and then this is just some herbs that I will try to winter over I've got some thyme and then a couple plants of rosemary in here this is a really neat succulent container that I got all these succulents from my sister. Oh, look at that one. That's cool. And I had it on my kitchen table and it looked really, really cool, but I wanted it to get as much sun 
uh, as it could before the winter comes. So I ended up putting it out here and it just did just get rained on. So um, we might have to bring it in sooner than later. We don't want it to get too much rain, but I'm so glad I left it out here because can you see all the different colors that the sun brought out? It was pretty colorful when I planted it, but it just got a lot more colorful after I brought it out here in the sun, but I love this little succulent container and I'm gonna put it back on my kitchen counter here pretty soon. So anyway, that's about it. Those are all my planters that I planted this year. Didn't really pay too much money for any of them except for uh, the annuals that I put in the whiskey barrel. I paid a dollar each for those. Uh, the rest of them I either got for free. My mom bought me a bunch of clearance plants. I either dug them up from my yard, they overwintered from a previous year, or my sister gave me plants to put in them. So I'm just super, super happy with my containers this year. I don't have to worry about going, you know, all around my deck and throwing out all the annuals that I paid money for and they're done for the season. Like, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I just couldn't handle that this year. So anyway, some years it's fine, but I'm just really, really excited that I didn't have to like spend any extra money on my planters. So anyway, uh, we will probably see you later and thank you guys so much for watching.